October 7, 2024, to order. Please rise for the invitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, your wisdom, your support as we begin this meeting. Um, help us engage in meaningful discussions. Um, allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of the community. And please watch over our nation with the hurricanes. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of the agenda. Madam, Madam Mayor, can I add a, a committee report, uh, board committee? Which one? Uh, board committee. Under committee report. Ah, yes, please. Dynamic engine braking, 
So, like you're saying, what are straight pipe? Um, uh, <clears throat> well, we can certainly look into that. Right? It's a safety, a safety concern to not right. just not allow it, especially in certain areas. But if it's unmuffled, then okay. Can be well, I can understand safety, but I drove truck for I don't know how many years, and I always had a jig break. But in town, I would not. I would not use it. Mm -hmm. And we, like I said, want to be truck drivers. Okay. And then they've got this straight pipe where they just rattle it and come and like boom. Anyway, I'm south in the town. I took my great dish in there all the time, Jake and all the way to the four-way stop. Yeah. I think it's a foot of the damn throttle. We just we can look into that. But then we would have to determine if it's muffled or not, right? Yeah, which you would go off of probable cause that it's not. <laughs> so um, that may become a little bit hairy to enforce, but I think it's still doable if we were to enact a, uh, an ordinance and write it in the appropriate manner. No, I think the signs up on any time were just put in by a residence. An individual. Yeah. For the use of them in town, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. actually is. You, not, not even safety. I mean, Why? I, I, I worked at the BLM. And you heard it every day, just like Kevin's saying. Thank they you. would start off at the four way and they'd be getting to like 40 miles an hour and then they'd hit their brake, their, their jig brake. And I mean, the speed limit's 30. Right. And I don't care if you're loaded or not, you don't need to be going that fast. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to oh, use your jig brake. Not in town. I think we would have to do a little bit more research on it. So all the gap to be here to get the ordinance again. Pass it between the city council or. <clears throat> I mean, we've got to do something. It'd be a constant. You'd be See. constantly pulling them over. Because yeah. they do it. They just, they can't not do it. <clears throat> and all they, all, the only reason they're doing it is so they can just hear it. I so drove a truck for 18 years. Operations. I, I agree with you. <laughs> I do with operations. I, I've heard them using two truck stop, you know, at, at uh, parking lots and stuff like that. It's yes. it's all the mentality of the truck driver. Even when they're unloaded, you can you witness them taking off. I mean, the first gear and they back off, the jig brake comes up. They're not even loaded. Yeah. It's just just so they can hear. It. I guess we can look into it some more. If we did do signs or something, we would have to figure something out to follow through with it. Yeah, or to enforce it, you need an ordinance to back up the yeah. sign, unless you're just like the sign that we got on South Summit with no truck traffic. Mm -hmm. And there's truck traffic there every day. Is, is that county road out there, Four Corners, and all that just county? Did the city have any jurisdiction on those roads and on the highways? By the highway? Yeah. Yeah, from the 50 mile an hour speed limit sign uh, coming down from the north, mm -hmm. from there into the four way, and then from the four way basically to the uh, bridge that goes over the railroad tracks, and then from the 45 mile an hour sign at the grade school back into town that way. So, so if you have an ordinance, then you could enforce it. Yeah, and and frankly, if if none of you are concerned about safety as far as Jake breaking goes, it would be much easier to enforce an ordinance that didn't have the unmuffled aspects to it, because then you're not going to have to say, you're not going to have to sit an officer on the stand and say, well, how do you know, or how did you have probable cause to know whether that truck had a muffler on it or not? Because I used to work on commercial trucks all the time. And, and 
you can put mufflers in underneath them. You can put mufflers in the stacks. You can, you know, you can hide them. It's not something you readily see without looking under the truck to check whether it has a muffler or not. So it would be easier to enforce if it was just straight no J brakes. And I can see coming down off the hill off the north because you got a pretty good percentage of grade coming down there, especially with right. a heavy load. Yeah. Like coming over the bypass, and I've had some individuals that talked about this issue um, when they were building the uh, building on um, Stampede and the local contractor that was coming through there, coming through the, by the school, the children's center, bringing their <coughs> Gravel and running our jakes right there next to the, you know, their, their straight road right there. And then I seen them, they'll be on the bypass coming toward the old port of injury, and they'll be jig breaking, just rattling. I mean, I think it almost rattled some windows. Check and see what Gillette's got or you know, some of these towns around her. Oh, yeah. We'll look into that. Okay, that's the first thing. Same thing is like when they're paving some of the streets around town. I mean, they'll pave up to the. We used to be a man all that utility cover, and they're always down lower. I mean, I know for a fact that they make rides that you can put on there. You know, like even have a dressing quarters, which would help. Rather than when it rains or snows and then it melts, and that water's going to run right under the damn pavement and just break it up. So we need to get somebody watching when they pave. We've talked about that before, haven't we, Greg, about the breakers. Did you want to comment on that? The standard is you're supposed to be no, no closer than a half inch from the top. Um, that allows for settling the street. It also allows us to be able to plow over the top without actually... Well, there's a bunch of these. You know, then it comes in our more than half inch. Boom! Yeah, no, there's several of them that need to be raised. Um, it's on, I mean, it's an ongoing thing. We, we got about 15, 20 up raised last year. We've got, I think, another 200 to go. So it's just the way the streets have moved and stuff like that. They've gotten out of, out of adjustment. It just takes time to get to them to adjust them. So. Because like Barney Armand told me, he said he was going to get a sign made and put it in his back window saying, I'm not drunk, I'm just dodging the holes. <laughs> no, I know that's something that the city crew's been working on. Like he said, it just takes time to get to them all. And it's not like on the top of the priority, <clears throat> but it's being looked at. Like, you know, like sure. Okay, well, thank you. And I mean, I've listened to that Jake break there and Bob Gordon back in the back all day long. Well, they're going to work on that. There's the chief and the city attorney will get together after they get some from the other counties and see how they have them written. Anything else? So do what you can. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, Don't think too hard. Nothing I can do. Right <laughs> well, thank you for bringing that to me. Okay, well. All right. Um, Jennifer Smith, all school reunion. Do I have to go up? Yeah. Sure. I do? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin didn't have to. He's sitting in the front row. He's older than you are. 
Maybe a little. <laughs> okay. Um, do, you, do you guys get the sheet for? Okay. I didn't. I didn't get a copy back. But we have a couple things that we want to change. It's going to be over Fourth of July weekend again, um, twenty twenty five. Uh, we would like to change the time of the parade instead of ten to eleven. Um, same route to close Main Street from Maverick. Well, we'll leave from the high school, go to Maverick, up Main to the courthouse. So we're hoping, I don't know what time the city closed the last time, if it was an hour before. Um, and then, I can't remember close time either. We're, we will have a DJ this, this time and we're hoping to move it up a block in front of the theater instead of down the block where there's really nothing open anymore later at night. So we would like the DJ. Is there electricity by the theater? Is there, isn't there some in that close? By, that bank by the bank? Yeah. There's at the bottom that the, of the, bank that the DJ could use? And we yeah. are. And then the across the street game. and then right at the lamp post too. There's okay. like, the arts council use those services. What I was thinking. Like where they set up for the summer concert yep. series, we yep. could use that power hopefully. Um, the the I've got to ask the bank about that. Yeah. It's their power. It is? Yeah. Every light bulb has power to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter, basically. They could. You need larger power than that. We do have two 30 amp uh, circuits, one by Isabella's and one by the parking lot, uh, city parking lot by Donna's Diner. Okay. And we want to be up yeah. a block this time just because we felt like there wasn't much going on down there and that we could keep it all. Yeah. Okay. Since Isabella's and. Typically, Perkins yeah. are in that block. There's, I mean, Amherst will probably close after lunchtime. So we were open last year that night. And, well, and one of the things we're going to pr propose to to the city is, we felt like, and a lot of the feedback was the two bars, Perkins and Isabel, was had a really hard time keeping up with how many people were there. If we could get bids from Perkins, Isabella's, Cat Bottle, whoever's interested in putting like catering, like putting something out on Main Street outside other than, yeah, take some yeah. load off of, I mean, we, we would still obviously want to give business to Perkins and Isabella's, but they yeah, just have a hard time with, keeping up. Somebody with a beverage permit and like said beer garden would, yeah. would, would help out tremendously, so I'll say on the opposite side of the street, so you have People, well, yes, they just seemed like if they were having a really hard time keeping up. Um, what else did we have? We were wondering if we could use the lot, the empty lot at the, above the courthouse, like where the employees park for um, maybe petting zoo, kid events instead of railroad park this time. It's the county's property. That's the county? Yeah. So I need to ask commissioners. Yes. Um, what else? That might be all we had. Oh, dumpsters. I don't know, Greg, did you feel like there was enough dumpsters? No, we need more. Right. I didn't know how many to ask for on the sheet because. Whatever you ask for, we're going to double it anyway. What's that? Whatever you ask for, we're going to double it anyway. <laughs> so. You guys give us a number that you think. Yeah, we can figure that out. And then, do you want us to try and get outhouses again? Um, I, we didn't arrange those last time. We did that, but did you kind of take the load off everybody trying to use the bar yeah, bathrooms? Think, oh yeah, and, yeah, we need that. Okay. With the number of people there, I think it would be very beneficial. Okay. The four class. Okay. Do you guys have anything you want us to try to do differently? Oh, and then we want the open container permit, hopefully, again. From what time to what time? Um, I would say after the parade uh -huh. until. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how we had it last time. You don't have it during, during the parade? No. Oh, maybe it was during. I'm sorry, yes, during the parade. <laughs> well, see, I, I know the bar wasn't even open for the parade. 
At 10? Yeah, I think it was. I think so. Okay. I think I know some people that so that Bloody Mary's in there. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. The Bloody Mary Mary's are going to be in. I think that was up to the chief of police at the time, was I in correct? To prove the open container? Well, you have to ask for us and then we. Okay, so we're asking open container parade through, I think it was, was it two? Last. Well, is there a 2 a.m. and then quarter? Yes, we have a DJ on Main Street Saturday night. want to turn that? Yes. So till 2 a.m. Oh, 2 a.m. Yes. Yeah. So 10 a.m. When, when, when is your beer garden going to be set up? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Why are you interested? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm always interested in the beer garden, but <laughs> not to put one up. Um, hopefully... By the time we're we're going to ask for food vendors again too, um, so hopefully all those coincide with times: the beer garden, the food vendors, <coughs> the closure, the open permit, and then we are hoping that the librarian will let us do the auction on their lawn again. So if there's anything you guys think needs changed this time from last time, we're we're willing to hear that. Okay, so you want the open container from 10 a.m. on the 4th or the 5th? The 5th is Saturday. And then to 2 a.m. Sunday night. Right. Okay. Do we have time? And the closure. I, I move that we have an open container from, from uh, 10 a.m. on the 5th to 2 a.m. on the 6th of July, 2025. This would be the fourth, right? The fifth. I think the fourth is a Friday, correct? Right. The fourth is a Friday. Yes. That's so Saturday is. is when we will do everything on the fifth. I second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Chief? Did you do the special event permit already? We yes. have the form. She's making changes to it. Okay. That should be sufficient for us, just so we have a a date and time because I'll forget by the time I walk out the door. Jennifer, you know, I come to get with you and my hand guy this morning. Yes, please. Um, and also, I have, who's, who do we need to talk to about fireworks? Well, here, let's approve this. Okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say aye. Okay. Uh, fireworks would be part of the county people or James. Well, are you talking James. about James? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they want to try and coincide it with Saturday night event, We're, but I think a lot of people will be to be on Friday night, probably. I just want them to be aware of that, that it might make a difference. So do you want to come to the fire meeting this Thursday and visit at 7? Mm -hmm. Let me check my schedule. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yes. I went over there too. Maybe Tracy would like to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Bruce Perkins, do you need permit for hospital input? That's a lot of Yep. Again, I respect him coming into the lion's den. Weston County is notoriously conservative. And JD came in and stood at the front of a room where he knew he was in the minority and took questions, which is better than I can say for others from, from that wing of the party. That's <laughs> my, my problem. So, so, you know, Chip not getting a chance to respond, hey, through no fault of our own or no fault of the Freedom Caucus, because the Freedom Caucus shows up, they've kind of had the stage to themselves. But for J.D. Williams to do something that, that sorry, that, you know, Ogden wouldn't do, um, you know, Liz Cheney wouldn't do. I mean, who he gets lumped in with, he came he came right up and, and he saw people and he talked to people. Um, Bruce Perkins, do you need permit for hospital That's a lot of Yep. And so we have a 24 hour catering permit that under by and by virtue of the provisions of section 12 4 502, subsection B of the state of Wyoming alcohol beverage control laws, the city of Newcastle, county of Weston, state of Wyoming, 
in consideration of the sum of $25 paid by Bruce Perkins doing business as Perkins Tavern of the City of Newcastle, County of Weston, <coughs> hereby licensed, permits, and authorized said Bruce Perkins doing business as Perkins Tavern to sell alcohol and malt beverages in and upon the premises of the Weston County Event Center for the event more specifically described as follows, Hospital Banquet. This license for catering permit is for the sum of one day only, beginning on the 9th day of November, 2024 at 9 a.m. through the 10th day of November, 2024 at 9 a.m. I move we approve Bruce's request and just as it's typed there. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, I hope it's a successful event, Bruce. It is. It is normally. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Thank you. Well, we're back again to say thank you for the use of the park. Thank you, Mayor, the City Council, Greg, the <clears throat> Police Department, Sheriff's Department, everybody pits in. It was a great year. It was awesome. How many cars? 163. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yep, yeah, we had a lot, of, a lot of different cars this year, too. Nice ones. Last time you were here, you were asking somebody to replace you. Have you found anybody yet? No, not yet. And I, well, I'm not going to come yet, but we're going to try to keep it. We don't sure. want to see it fail. Until you get somebody that will do it exactly like you did. <laughs> That's going to be hard to do. I still should have picked the block in there. Yeah, the bad, bad, bad time choosing the right one. Yeah, I think she can choose five. You know, we got to do one. But they were going to plant real well. The chief of police, he was there. We re kind of redid the burnouts. They worked good. Great, your crew was fantastic. And the sheriff's department, they said. So it was all quite the community coming together for it. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you for bringing another successful event. Yeah, I'll tell you, it keeps going. Good. Glad to hear it. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, no business. Um, in writing, uh, old business certificates of recognition for the ELM. So this certificate of recognition is for the Bureau of Land Management in recognition of their work and beautify of our community with the updates to their building. And I'm sorry, I don't know. It's okay. I'm Chad Cross. I'm the field Hi. manager here. Nice to meet you, Chad. Nice to meet you. So that's for you guys. The building looks great. Thank um, you. I appreciate the platform. Um, I think my most important message is actually uh, to the council and mayor where recognition truly should go. Uh, the building owners are Richie and Freddie Strongness. They're the building owners. And uh, White Construction, uh, Nick White, project manager Tim Matthews, and then suite of local subcontractors uh, did the work. So that's where recognition uh, really should go towards. Um, but one of the reasons I did want to take advantage of the invitation uh, from the city, and so thank you very much for that, is I had a wise individual share with me once that uh, uh, being a public servant, especially being a public servant in small communities, one of the keys to success is uh, emphasizing community support um, in your daily priorities. And I think with our day-to-day -day work, um, you know, whether it's approving an oil and gas well on BLM or ensuring forage is available for livestock or the mountain bike trails and people can go hunting and fishing and recreate, that's sort of obvious. But one of the things that's maybe not as obvious, which is why I wanted to be extend my gratitude to the city, is things like, uh, you know, our employees that are youth sports coaches or active members in the churches or in this case, utilizing local contractors to make a building that the community can be proud of. And so I really want to take the time to extend my gratitude to the council and the city for recognizing that community support goes beyond our day-to-day -day 
things. So, and I apologize, I won't be able to stay for the entire city council meeting because I have to pick up my kid from youth sports. But <laughs> <laughs> that's part of community support too. So thank you. We do have um, certificates for Richie and Freddie in white construction. I really, I did the meeting because I wanted to give them the opportunity to come and accept on their behalf, but I can get them to them. Okay, perfect. So, thank thank you, you much. Very appreciate much. it. Council there, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Newcastle Ambulance Service. Excuse me, Mayor. Um, can we put some in for next time? Yeah. Um, um, I'd like to recognize Ann Hansen for her paint job on her apartments on some Seneca. I don't know the address, but it looks very, very nice. Yes. It's a huge improvement. So. It is. <coughs> and I think we're going to be a very good thing. This isn't a house. I mean, this is a business. And so it did she did a great job on it. I love this one. Yep. Uh, Newcastle Ambulance Service. Did they come? I left them a message. So at our last meeting, um, we had some things on the service agreement that needed to be corrected. And no, so, uh, Council, I had a discussion with Tom Lubnow um, regarding the service agreement. Um, after discussing it with him and actually doing a little bit of research into uh, basically what entails an agency for joint agreements, if you read at the top, um, the Lubnow firm actually represents Campbell County Hospital District. Um, Campbell County Health EMS, um, from what I can tell, is actually a subsidiary of uh, Campbell County Hospital District. So we will have to, um, at least in theory, take this to the Attorney General for signature. Um, and basically what the Attorney General does is they look over the agreement, make sure that you know, we're not violating any laws as a political subdivision of the state, and then they send it back with any provisions or amendments that they want put into the actual agreement. Um, in discussion with um, our firm and Tom, we looked at the into the waiver of subrogation. However, if you look into section three, as well as the, I believe it's section four, subrogate waiver of subrogation in this case basically would entail more or less the same things that are being stated within the, the actual con contract itself. So. Um, I asked Tom, I said, what was basically your purpose for putting in section three and section four? And he said, well, among other things, waiver of subrogation. That was before I asked him if we were going to be that. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next step is to basically have to send this to the attorney general because of you. Yep, send it to the, the head honchos and see if they'll accept it. the council then to uh, move forward with accepting this agreement with the amendment that it be $103,500 to send to Campbell County Health EMS if anyone's up to that task. I make a motion that we would accept the agreement to the Campbell County Health EMS for you and then also on the acceptance from the attorney general. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. <laughs> Business number three, first. Madam Mayor, um, I have not heard back from the person that 
uh, DEQ that they need to talk to. So we'll have to take a look for another meeting. Um, we got sidetracked on the landfill one issues. So I move that we table the garbage truck discussion until the next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. Second. And we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Wyoming Community Gas Project Distribution under new business. So the Wyoming uh, Community Gas Community Project designations. Every year, the Wyoming Community Gas makes a distribution of earnings to member communities. This year, our board of directors would like you to designate the projects your city or town launched from the news or before issued before we issue a check. This will give your Wyoming Community Gas more direct exposure to the citizens in each community. Please return this form as soon as possible, preferably by December 31st, 2024. The City of Newcastle, $6,006.69. The City of Newcastle has designated the distribution for Wyoming Community Gas as follows. Let me get Christmas decorations. And the dial top. Yeah, so do you have, I was making that for you. Oh, okay. Because you always say Christmas decorations. Sounds good to me. And down uh, So, anybody have any ideas? What, what are you saying there? That we're gonna... We get six thousand. Yeah, I got that. I know we get six thousand. And last year we did uh, some of it towards the new lights for decorations for Christmas dinner and the other uh, half we did for the dollar truck. Uh -huh. I'd like to see us put away some money for 2025 and the, the new council that's going to take over for research and development. And what I mean by that is, is, is looking into ideas that this city can do and have and send people out and send, you know, because it costs money to travel, it costs money to chase ideas down. And I think we need some dollars to, to expand our abilities. I just thought I'd mention that. Like, for instance, we never really talked to an engineer about um, anaerobic digesters to see if, uh, if, if our city could even use them. We don't know. I have no idea. And, and uh, you know, something like that needs to, uh, if, say, if ideas like that come up again, we would have some money to say, okay, we, we can look into this and we've got a few dollars to spend towards it. I mean, are there specific requirements of us to utilize these funds? I mean, does it have, does it to, have be to be tangible for yeah. a community yeah. development project? No, it's community project designation. So can I make a project? suggestion? Yes. I know they're still trying to raise money <coughs> uh, for a Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be a nice target to put some of the money. Uh, we're still trying to raise money for that. Yeah, no, I move that we move, we give half the money to the Veterans Memorial and half to our own uh, community project research and development fund. Do we have a research and development fund? Do we have a research and development fund? Well, we're going to create with this $3,000 and 25 cents. <laughs> Nobody second the motion anyway. <laughs> it just kind of died. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Yeah. I mean, I would support your idea, Tom, but I just don't. I don't know uh, what we're allowed to use the funding for. I mean, need more specific. Yeah, that's a community project. Well, and, and that's a that's a community project out there at the four way yeah. veterans, and it would be a community project to have research and development towards community project. <laughs> He's not going to look up. No. How are we no, no seconds are <laughs> 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 Like I said, yeah. the, uh, the, 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 the
was spent and the guy never showed up at our building. So we lost all of our funding, all of our, all of our reserve funding for this project. Um, we used 3,000 of it last year, I believe, into that, and that's what we have currently for the Val Park bathroom other than tax dollars out of the general fund. Well, we have we have until December 31st, so we can all come back with ideas at the yeah, next let's meeting. Think about and then we can also research a little bit more on community project designation. Does that sound good? Does everybody kind of get an idea and bring it back next meeting? I move that we table the Wyoming Community Gas Project distribution money discussion for the next uh, council meeting. I second. second. Yeah, second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say so. aye. Aye. <laughs> oh, I'll do it now. All right. Uh, committee reports uh, number one for committee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I got to attend a uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, board meeting. Um, it was kind of impromptu when I know the other board committee members were probably tied up, but I was able to attend. And uh, Jenny Proffer, the new executive director for the Chamber of Commerce, uh, part time director. Uh, she's full of tons of great ideas. She's been really active in the community uh, as far as recruitment. She's doing a lot of the things that uh, as a council, I think we were kind of hung up on, on the Chamber of Commerce prior. Um, she's uh, found out that there's a lot of people that don't even know whether they're a, a Chamber of Commerce board member. Um, and, and like I said, she's just really vibrant and uh, well-liked in the community, and she's been really, really active in trying to uh, bring up the membership. So um, I just wanted to give her a shout out because she's doing a really good job. And then uh, they got some out-of-the-box kind of ideas. Uh, they've been able to staff the uh, Chamber of Commerce building. Uh, because there's a an elderly lady that works or that lives at the senior center and she jumps into a a van and gets driven down there and she's able to man the desk wow. so uh, the chamber actually passed um uh and, and uh, allowed for some funding so that they, she could pay for her bus ride to get to the chamber uh, oh, building. Oh, nice. but she's she's uh, been able to help a lot of people and let them know uh, where to go and what's going on in town so um, this uh, uh, chamber of commerce board is is doing a lot of good things and, and with uh, Jenny as the executive director I think uh, uh, they're pointed in a really good direction so, and then uh, at the last meeting to the board chair uh, is going to resign in November. So they're going to need a new board chair. Uh, Henry Essel said that he's going to step down. But it, it was a good meeting, and I just wanted to let everybody know about it. Thank That's you. all I have. Thank you. Can I add to that? Uh, with the Travel Commission side, that she's already reached out to us and the reestablished, I guess, communication. She's going to be on our next meeting. Um, also, tourist information, printed materials start to flow back into the, the chamber for them to distribute. So it, uh, she's opened that communication a little bit again with us. Okay. Great. Moving on. The new store. This is the one-stop shop. We have a pharmacy. We have a bootleggers liquor. The deli, the food that you can get at a lunchtime is so amazing. The coffee shop, certain Friday mornings, there's 30 people sitting here in all these chairs. This is the hub for people to come and visit, have their coffee, have their donuts. It's amazing what this area has done. Totally amazing. Okay, so we're moving on to department head reports. Number one, public works supervisor, Greg Stump. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The first item, uh, when we receive federal monies of certain requirements, one of the requirements is meeting uh, the non-discrimination 
policy through EPA. Um, ours does not currently meet the standard for it. What doesn't meet the standard? Well, for one, we don't have the, all the proper uh, terminology in it. We are missing the notice, which is this sheet here. We don't have a, an adequate notice. We do not currently have a grievance policy and procedures for somebody to make a, a grievance and some other language that was in it. Basically, I took what EPA had for a template and used that so we could make compliance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. One thing we do need to decide on with this too, I just put my name in it, my name in it with due to a lack of knowing what to do. Um, we really need to decide who is going to be the non-discrimination coordinator and receive the complaints and take care of them. What, what does he do? If, if there's a if there's a complaint of non-discrimination non-discrimination report, then they investigate it and bring it in front of the council to see. And yeah, it's in this one here, Tom. There's Are a, you talking about employees? This is public. This is anybody. This procedure. This this, this sounds like a police matter to me. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Use the back of this. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So we have it go to the clerk, and it can be delegated to the personnel committee, to the police committee, to, if it's about her, then she can say it's about me and give it to the police committee, or the personnel committee. With, with this, we also have our Dow Park bathroom grant that we're working on. The Highway 16 pathway project is also federal monies along with our SRF, our SRF monies, is all relying on having an adequate non-discrimination policy. Did you read this? No, I didn't read his, his print up, but I was informed of the requirement of having a non-discrimination coordinator for federal funds in advance. So all, does all this stuff have to be printed in some kind of thing you give them? Yes. Uh, this one here will be posted at City Hall. This one here, minus my writing, will be on our website. And this will also be available on the website. And then the grievance policy and procedure with the application will also be on available on the website as well as in the office. So I guess that's the question is who would be the non discrimination coordinator? Yeah. So would it be somebody employed by the city of Newcastle? Typically yes. So it would fall into their um, their uh, job description moving forward, correct. Is that something that you and the girls in the office think would be fine? Is that something mm -hmm. They're usually gonna call the main office probably a number and then that can be taken and given to the uh, committees from that point. Office. So, who who is your suggestion to be the coordinator? The coin. I mean, in one of the department heads, I would say. Clerk um, Agri is probably the main contact that we first. Okay. So that would, and we, we had talked about it. Right? Neither one of us have any preference, so. Does it have to be one 
specific person or can it be a committee of people or? Uh, no, it's actually a specific person or specific position with the name of the position, okay. person in the position. So, so I mean, Stacy, you're the one that usually delegates. Like you, you filter the information and then send it out. So, I mean, would would you want to incur that responsibility yeah, that, or? That's I don't have an issue with it. I think that's fine. Okay. Well, then I move that um, uh, Clerk Haggerty be our non-discrimination um, coordinator. coordinator. Yeah. I would say the city clerk position. Oh, uh, I move the that the right? city clerk slash treasurer be the non-discrimination coordinator from this moment to the future. Stacy, is that something you want to do? I second it. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Is that something we need to do? So it, it's something that we need. To, it's a requirement. Yes. So we're doing it so that we can be able to apply for funding and and all the stuff that we have to do with the EPA. Yes, correct. Um, we do have one, and it's very similar to this one. It just doesn't have all the language that is necessary uh, with the one we have currently in our policy manual. And you'll be able to get the, the changes made on here and on the website? Yep. Okay. I'm more, has anyone got a chance to look through this to make sure everything is in the piece of the I have a councilman. I don't want to mess with the feds, man. One of the things with it is, is that it always comes up. It's just it's how federal funds often work is they basically say, yes, you can have this if you do this. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the federal codes and regulations on this, this comes from, if I remember correctly, Title IX, um, as well as the Civil Rights Act. Um, but it basically is just if you're going to use these funds, then you're going to basically follow the rules as well. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't think that there's any issue. I think the time that there might be some you know, just some clarification that I need to do some research on is basically each instant case um, because it could depend on what sort of requirements you're going to have to have for certain people with certain disabilities or what the component is. One example of this, um, Cardell Park Restaurant. Let's say we did not pour the handicap ramp coming from the curb up onto the sidewalk to the bathrooms. That would be a great piece that they could bring to us. So we did not do that during construction because that is one of the requirements that during construction is to meet ADA requirements. So this this gives them a, a mechanism to let us know that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Next item, uh, now that we've got our inventory, our lead and copper, lead service line inventory almost completed. We have just over 500, I believe, currently unknown service lines. We cannot say if they're copper, plastic, what they are. So after we submit our inventory to EPA, we have to send out a notice of unknown material to the customers we do not know what their service line is or we cannot identify it because we've never seen it. We have no records to prove what the line is. Um, I just wanted to let the council know and be aware that this, these letters will be going out to certain members of the community strictly to let them know that we do not know what their line is. We have the water master plan completed. We have a final report. That's the final report. Oh, great. But well, we do this? have this. We, it's an executive session. <laughs> so you don't have to read all 311 pages. Thank you. We do have this electronically. So any of the council members that want, want the full report or the executive summary as a, as a PDF, we can do that.
I'd like a copy, Greg. Digital copy. So it work? Oh, yes, please. There's two of them. Yes, the next item. Um, to give you an update on the pathway, the Highway 16 pathway project that we've been working on for just over a year. Um, they're at 90% plans right now. <coughs> we've. 90? Yeah, we're pretty much nailed down all the plans, how we're going to build it, uh, adjusting grades, things like that. The price. The estimated engineer's estimate, which is this year, should run, is 958,440 dollars and two cents for this project. 958,440. This project would, if we move forward with construction, would be eligible for TAP funds, which guess what is another federal grant. We would have to come up with nine point. 51% of that grant, which means, <coughs> I don't know if you should have this ready. Um, we would have to come up with $91,147.65. We currently have a line item on our budget of $40,000. $296.00 for this to met for match funds for this project. So essentially, we would have to come up with $50,851.65 of the engineer's estimated cost for this pathway project. And this is from Morsi to Morsi to uh, basically the port of entry. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the, uh, the grant yet to investigate it. Um, we did file for an extension on this project with uh, YDOT to finish the work that we need to do. <clears throat> the um, agreement we had was for October 5th, so we did file for an extension and extended that out another six months to make sure we have enough time to finish the design work. Um, so where do we find this fifty thousand dollars? That money would be budgeted most likely out of the uh, general fund tax dollars, say the street fund or the parks fund. So would that leave you short somewhere else? Yeah, I mean we 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 budget for it out of the out of the general fund. Just something to think about in the meantime. I'll find out about the TAP program and see what all is involved in that and when we have to apply and that sort of stuff. Um, Could we get help from YDOT at all? That is help with YDOT. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, they uh, just like the SRF program manages the EPA money, federal monies. YDOT manages uh, USDOT grant funds. They're uh, basically YDOT is the pass-through agency, just like the EQ is a pass-through agency for the SRF funds. <clears throat> we have a Monument application to the cemetery. 
that I'd like to visit with the cemetery committee about. Um, send out an email and get everybody's opinion on what dates work best for them. We will supply that application. kind of a unique one. So, that's okay. Um, the water sewer committee, I'll be calling one of those to discuss part of the East Wentworth project that we, we had some issues come up on. We interviewed a Mike Felstead. He's originally, he's actually from Idaho, just moved to town. We reviewed his references and completed pre employment screenings. <clears throat> I would request to offer a position to Mike Felstead effective October 8th at a starting rate of $18 per hour for full-time position with a one-year probation. Mike Felstead? Felstead, F-E-L-S-T-E-D. I move that uh, we approve the hire of Mike Felstead. October 8th at $18 per hour with one year probation. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Any favor say aye. Sorry. Did you listen? Well, on, on this, this guy's pretty new, and I guess we got him on a year probation, so that, that'll take care of that. There's, has somebody quit that we're filling a position? Yes. Okay, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say aye. Thank you. I think that's it unless there's questions about the reports. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, moving on to Police Chief Derek Thompson. In addition to the weekly printed version of the newsletter journal, we also promote our community and share important information on our award-winning website, newslj.com, and in our weekly email newsletter, Nuke Now. We also connect with readers through various social media platforms and invite you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even take a look at a recent meeting of the City Council, School Board, or County Commission on our YouTube channel. We do hope that you will go to newslj.com and subscribe today, and we look forward to making all of our great content available to you. But regardless of your level of support, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing your part to preserve a free and independent local press. Any questions? Um, moving on to Police Chief Derek Thompson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First item is calls for service since September 16th. Newcastle Police Department 233. <clears throat> Weston County Sheriff's Office 168. Upton Police Department 20. Newcastle Volunteer Fire Department 19. Weston County Fire Protection District 10. Upton Volunteer Fire Department 10. Newcastle Ambulance 41. And Upton Ambulance 7. Second item I have, uh, we've completed the background or interview process and background process to hire an administrative assistant uh, that we budgeted for this year. And I would like to extend, if it pleases the council, I'd like to extend an offer of employment to Carrie Peterson as the administrative assistant for the police department uh, at $17 an hour starting on the 21st of this month with one year probation. Your Honor, I move that we hire or offer, let the police chief offer a job to uh, Carrie Peterson at the $17, 17 an hour. Yeah. On the 21st. On the 21st. Yeah. So moved. Pardon? With one year probation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I second. Here we have a motion and second um, to extend up Carrie Peterson on October 21st, $17 an hour from one year probation. Any further discussion? Can you tell us something about her? I mean, is she from here? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was wondering if that's what it was. Yeah, she, uh, 
Well, uh, I know a maiden name. Maybe. Watson. Yeah, Watson. Yeah, she's presently works at uh, Silkies, and she's a remarkable lady, and she will add something to our department, I'm sure. All in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you, Council. Uh, my third item is I would also like to offer a conditional offer of employment uh, to Zachary Jenkins. He's a young man from Buffalo, Wyoming, uh, for a position of police officer. We interviewed him uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I would like to offer him a position, con uh, conditional position, pending a psychological evaluation, background investigation, physical exam, drug screen, and successful fingerprinting. Do we have starting? What's that? Starting? Oh, starting, uh, starting wage, would, this is a conditional offer in employment, so starting wage would be 2107, but uh, I don't have a start date yet because you have to complete all of those things prior to actually becoming an employer. So I'm just requesting to give him a conditional offer. I move that we offer Zachary Jenkins a, a conditional uh, position offer starting at 2107 if he passes his background check and all the fingerprinting and all the other stuff. One year probation. And one year probation. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Any prior experience or? Uh, no, he did have a, a brief employment with a detention center in uh, Carbon County. Carbon, is it Rollins? Is Carbon County correct? Yeah. In Rollins, he worked for a detention center there. So, and just so the council is aware, I just got done with a course titled Legally Sufficient Background Investigations. <laughs> That's become a pretty hot topic in today's world of law enforcement. And one of the things they suggested, and that's why I went about it this way, is that, they, that you extend a conditional offer of employment first, and then you go through all their background process, and there's some legal reason behind that. Uh, this course was through Daigle Law Group, which is actually a, a law group about a Connecticut started by a gentleman who was a Connecticut state trooper for 10 years before becoming an attorney and his primary focus on his practice is to support law enforcement and they do a ton of training they actually will do background investigations and things of that nature for you but that's this is the process in which they suggest that we go about this so basically it's we do an interview if we like what we saw we have hope we extend the conditional offer and then we go through all the other steps of checking in with them and seeing if they're going to be a fit candidate or not. So. Will this young man have to go to the police academy? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you, Council. Uh, fourth item, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on uh, when we transitioned to the Joint Powers Board, we took an older phone system that was owned by the police department that services, that used to service uh, the departments internally. And we're currently paying, or the Joint Powers Board is currently paying just shy of $1,000 a month for that phone system. We uh, did some looking into uh, the connection type that goes to that phone system and it was called a T1 line and apparently they're very expensive to maintain for whatever reason. Uh, in the new building we have what is called a SIP connection and don't ask me to explain the difference between this but it's significantly cheaper, a significantly cheaper way of going about it. In the process we found out that Range has a phone system that is also significantly cheaper than the Westel phone system that we're paying for now. So we're seriously exploring the option of replacing this phone system at actually a cost savings. And the difference being is that the Joint Powers Board will soak up the biggest cost, which is $300 and some change a month for all the phone lines and the 
um, main portion of that phone system. Now the physical phones that each department will have, the department will then pay for those phones. And the reason we did it that way is because it, the, the phone system itself is one of the things that's a little bit disproportionate um, because the sheriff has significantly more phones than anybody else, but they don't pay the majority of the bill for the joint power department. So we decided to have each entity pay for their own phones and what it will cost the police department is $147 a month for the new phone system. So, and I think we're gonna get rid of some bills, so I don't think it would take any sort of budget amendment or anything like that. But I just wanted to make everybody aware that that was the plan. And the, the beauty of this is it will allow dispatch to type in a three digit extension and it will actually go to an app on the officer's cell phone. So it'll ring directly to the officer at one even you can set it to where it'll ring into an office or it'll go directly to the cell phone and when they're on their days off they can turn that app off so their phone's not ringing all the time so it it offers us the ability to make calls from that app off of our phone to individuals and it doesn't give them our phone numbers on caller id because you run into issues where if a citizen gets your phone number they start trying to use the individual officer's cell phones 911 if you will which is a bad situation so um, it, it shows that it's ringing from dispatch when we call off of this app on our cell phone so it has a lot of benefits to it and i just wanted the council to be aware we were seriously exploring that option again i don't think it'll require any kind of budget amendment or anything like that so and then uh, was there any questions about that and the uh, last thing I would like to request a police committee meeting whenever you are all available. So you don't even know that, or what are you, what are you looking at? Um, you don't know? I have a meeting on Thursday at 5 o'clock. Obviously, tomorrow's out, but any other day I should be. And we can go next week sometime if that would be easier. Next week. Right now it's going to be after 6 30. After 6 30. Okay. <clears throat> be available. But, um, Wednesday, but then come like January. It's nothing super exigent at this point, so we can go a couple weeks if you want to. Wednesday this week? Then come like and to make it on the this week. That's hard when it was getting all in July. Oh, um, yeah. We can do it probably Monday next week. Okay. I can do that. What time were you thinking? Well, I would probably still shoot for after 6 3 until I can kind of see how things are going okay. at work right now. Shoot for 6 30 then? 30 on the 14th. Here? Yeah, that would be fine. That is all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions, Keith? Uh, City Attorney Dublin Hughes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, council, the only thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, I'd like to ask the council for leave to um, update the personnel policies and in concert with the chief as well as the police committee um, to look into updating some of the police personnel policies. The reason being is that there's been some basically some new updates in, in case law as well as just statutory schemes. Um, and I think updating those would probably help the council as well as um, basically everyone involved in the operation of this uh, city and efficiency wise, making sure that we are observing certain laws while not having to observe things that we don't have to observe. I think that's a great idea. There's a lot of things that probably need to get readjusted and put in. And obviously, it would be a um, any update or change we would bring before the council. Um, council would deliberate and then 
uh, make any amendments to or changes or revisions that they you know, thought were deemed necessary. Just for clarification, Doug, when you're talking about both the personnel for the city itself and the police? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So would that be trying to make the two match better? Because there was some discrepancy in mm -hmm. how... Um, what it would be is basically just uh, specifically the details kind of our, um, maybe kind of a long discussion if we were to get into it tonight, but um, more or less what it would be is just trying to follow some of the Wyoming case law a little more closely so that certain things that the city's supposed to observe, um, you know, are basically focalized as to what the language is in the case law so that it's not observing three or four other different things that are costing the city weeks to for instance, file a grievance process or, you know, discharge an employee or promote an employee or pay an employer, things of that nature. Um, it's just from, in my representation, there's been some things that have come up and I, obviously this isn't going to be done in a week or two weeks or even two months, frankly, but um, it's just certain things that I want to basically look into a little more heavily, spend some more time on, and then bring back basically a recommendation after going through the proper committees to actually apply something different so that we're running a little more efficiently. I agree. I think there's a lot of things in there that we've had over the several years trying to read through them and decipher you know, which ones are we trying to follow? Um, it's kind of a long time overdue of trying to get these to kind of talk to each other. Um, and I think that's all I have. Right there. That doesn't take a motion. I think, does it? No, but it's good to ask just to make sure that I'm not spending time on things that I shouldn't be spending time on. I, I move what what uh, that one said. You can just go straight down. Did he take some week to get it working? Well I wasn't gonna try to recite all that. That's in the policy you can't hmm? get other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a second respect to my <laughs> So, thank you. <laughs> so I did it require a motion? I don't so that you could we, we may as well. If, if okay, now I second. Okay. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Yeah, so we you, you did want a motion to move forward with this or did it need a motion? That's one of those um, I mean, I'm not expending any sort of money, but it is my time and technically as an employee you could make the argument that you have to have a motion for me to do something different than what frankly I'm already doing to some extent, but I don't think anyone is going to really parcel out some good argument as to that being one, but I, the motion is appreciated. Okay, um, I, I think it's a great idea to you know that we get this situated because it has been kind of a nightmare um, over the last year. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for city attorney? Uh, city clerk treasurer Stacy Harvey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I had emailed you all a copy of the engagement letter with the auditors, normal audit process. Um, but I'm just requesting that we can um, have this engagement letter signed. If there's any questions. I make the motion that we sign the engagement letter with the several forces and for the upcoming event. I second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Thank you.
And then um, I also had a um, interview with a gal, Rachel Lacrosse, or Rochelle Lacrosse. She's um, from Washington, but I do believe she's a great candidate to fill the open deputy clerk position in the city hall office. And I'd request to hire her um, at $17 an hour with one year probation starting October 9th. And lacrosse? Lacrosse. lacrosse. So I make a motion if we give you an offer to Rachel Lacrosse for $17 an hour, one year probation starting October 9th for the Deputy Clerk of Treasurer Commission. Second. You have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? How many applicants were there? Five. Rachel or Rochelle? Rochelle. Rochelle. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. And that's all I have. Okay. Any questions for um, City Clerk? Does this lady live here? Yes. She does. I believe she graduated high school here. I believe her maiden name was Davies. Um, she actually had her sister in law, but she has had one serious job, so I think that speaks very well. So 30 years at one place. Okay. Um, claims against the city dated October 7, 2024. Your Honor. I move that this doctor's job pay its bills. <coughs> second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say sign. Um, can I get a motion to leave regular session to enter into executive session? Regarding uh, Wyoming Statute 16-4-405, AII personnel. I move that we go into executive session. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Entry.